Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our new November's live stream customer success story. This is a session where we feature the trailblazing customers doing the most innovative things to improve customer experience. I am beyond excited to be speaking with BRG today, a company that is so close to my heart because of what they stand for. BRG ships the way people experience life, delivering millions of moments of joy through their powerhouse of experience brands. How awesome is that? <laughs> it gets better. BRG is a company whose ethos is valuing experiences over material goods, and they are the largest marketplace for experiences in AMZ. I am Pauline, I am the founder and managing director of AF Digital, and I'm very excited to introduce to you our guest for today, one of our esteemed clients, Elise Wilson, head of personalization and customer lifecycle of Big Red Group. Hello, Alice, and welcome. Can you please introduce yourself and share a bit about how you became the legend that you are now? <laughs> Thank you, Pauline. <laughs> I wouldn't say legend, but um, <laughs> yeah, so I am in the head of customer lifecycle and personalization at Big Red Group. Um, again, I'm really excited to work for a company like Big Red Group. My values definitely align to doing experiences over things. Um, and I've been at Big Red Group for nearly four years now, so I have definitely seen us gone through um, some a lot of transformation and some really positive changes that we've had over the last couple of years. But I'm excited to talk today a bit about that journey and what's next for us. Yes, I'm so excited. But before that, I would just like to share that Elise is kind enough to be giving away a hundred dollar worth of voucher to our one, to one viewer. So all you have to do is email us your biggest takeaway at marketing at afdigital.com with a subject line of BRG100 and you get to ex um, have that $100 worth of experience for free. <laughs> so um, we have been on this digital transformation journey for quite some time now. How did it all start for the business? What was the business problem you guys were trying to solve? Yeah, so BRG, um, we've grown so much in the last five years and it was incredibly important that we were able to scale rapidly. Um, this required continual digital transformation of the way that we operate um, and the tools that we use. So we also had to manage this during a pandemic and alongside a hybrid workforce, one of which I'll add has doubled um, in size during the pandemic. Wow. Um, so this is com um, compounded by... Um, the technical debt that we accumulated when we acquired new businesses. So we started off with Red Balloon and we have Adrenaline and Experience Oz um, and Local Agent. And we know that uh, the legacy platforms that we acquired couldn't deliver the experiences that we needed to match for the rising consumer expectations. Um, we know that poor uh, customer experiences can significantly impact our conversion rates. So I would say that our three problems that we were trying to solve was reducing the complexity within our technology environment in order to simplify the employee experience and also make sure that we're meeting um, an increased customer expectation. Um, we had 80% of our site traffic from mobile and we needed a mobile first platform to optimize the browsing and buying experience. And lastly, but definitely most importantly, we needed to nurture relationships with our customers and our suppliers in order to build a strong foundation for growth. I love the clarity and, you know, the specific, specificity of the business problems that you guys were trying to solve. How did you go about figuring out, you know, what is the right solution for these, you know, quite unique challenges? Yeah, I think for me, first and foremost, you need to be really clear on what your business and customer strategy is. So it's really common um, pitfall for people. And, and I can say that, you know, it's really hard. We've seen it here at Big Red Group that <laughs> swept up in um, what we call, you know, this shiny new uh, tech syndrome where you can have a really solid strategy, um, but sometimes you get kind of blinded by these new tools and shiny new objects. And so I think it's really important that you have a solid strategy to come back to. Mm -hmm. um, I think once you've mapped those out, you can then start to look at what are the tools and the solution to help you enable these strategies rather than kind of just getting swept up in kind of whatever's the the new flavor of the month. Um, <laughs> it's really important to ensure that you choose tools that you can scale with your business. So when you're looking at it, it's like, how can I future proof this? So it will meet my customers needs now. But as I look to what my business might be in two years time, in three years time, um, making sure that you meet your customer business needs as well for future state. 
There's so many gems there that I need to unpack. Yeah, it is indeed easy to get swept away with not just the shiny objects, but also like trends, you know, like, you know, what are the new marketing trends? You want to jump on it and that everyone is doing. And I'm also glad that you highlighted that it's important to find the perfect balance between choosing the right tech stack now that solves your immediate problems, but also that is that allows you to build that foundation for scale mm -hmm. and growth, right? I'm also amazed that the organization had the wisdom and the discipline to be able to align and nail down the strategy. Because that on its own is challenging because you had to like consolidate like three businesses, as you mentioned, and you've grown so tremendously fast in COVID as well, in yeah. lockdown. So yeah. can you share briefly how you were able to map out your strategy? Yeah, of course. So I think... Look, um, everyone will have a different opinion, but I think people get caught up into this strategy being this really big, scary concept. But really what you're trying to understand is your why. And I think if you always come back to your why, you can't really get led astray. But so I think when we knew, for instance, a big red group, we are an e-com company. Um, con our conversion rate is a key metric for us and it wasn't where we needed it to be. Um, also, our cost to acquire new customers is quite high um, and our lifetime value is not where we wanted it to be. So these were the metrics that we knew as a business we wanted to shift. And that's just one part of it. So whilst we definitely need to shift those metrics, the only way we were going to shift those metrics is if we really understood what our customers' needs were along, our, along their journey and the touch points that they had with us as a business. So to come up with our strategy, um, we mapped out our customer journeys. We identified the pain points that we know and what we heard from our customers that we needed to address and that we then worked backwards to kind of, I guess, retrofit, okay, if what are the main pain points that we need to work on and how do we think what is the best value or the low-hanging fruit to kind of start to see and test and learn um, to then come up with a crawl, walk, run approach, um, which I think is really important, which, you know, I can talk about for, for hours. But um, <laughs> once you've kind of solidified what the metrics as a business you're trying to go after and what your customer needs are, you've kind of got your why, the next part that you're trying to uncover in your strategy is the how. Yeah. And that's when your tools come through. So I think, you know, once we then worked out our strategy and we kind of use this as our living, breathing document to go back to, it really allowed us to then make a, the right choice and choose in the right partner. Right. That's amazing. And how did you go about choosing the right partner? Because that's when it's someone is very challenging with so many, you know, available like options for you. Yeah, it's it's um, it, it's incredibly important that we chose the right partner. Um, and I would say that there was two main things. Like there's, there's a whole list of things that you do when you kind of go out and you do an RFP and you look for a partner to work with. But I would say the two main things that we looked at is one, um, we needed a partner that had the technical skill set to help us really stand the platform up. Whilst we ourselves were trying to upskill um, and understand the tools, we needed that technical expertise. Um, and secondly, I would say that ensuring we chose a partner that could kind of be an extension of our team. So it was really important. We are big, big red group is, is a, uh, we're an ambitious team, but we're a lean team um, and we work really well together. And what we wanted is someone to kind of augment themselves into our team um, and kind of be, a, be, be in this with us. Um, and so that were kind of the two main things that we looked like. And so BIG first turned to Salesforce to help us move uh, complexity from the business and get back to the basics. So we had layers, as I mentioned earlier, we had layers of technology and, and poorly implemented applications that were a source of frustrations for employees. And it made it really costly for us to scale as a business. Um, more to the point, we had we kind of lost connection with our customers. We acquired customers one at a time um, and we treated them the same. So there was no differentiation as to whether someone was making their first purchase with us or their 10th mm -hmm. purchase with us. Um, so we started by consolidating the systems to manage our customer relationships across our brands. So, for example, um, we got used Service Cloud and Natterbox um, from the App Exchange, and we were able to consolidate and, and streamline our customer support, which was um, a massive change for our, our, our customer experience team and also to our customers. Um, and then from a marketing perspective, we also worked alongside AFD, um, and Salesforce to achieve further consolidation in our marketing. So when I first started um, in 20, early 2019, we had seven different email platforms that we had wow. acquired along the way with our businesses. And as you can imagine, as a team trying to jump in and out of different systems, um, 
we had to really make some quick decisions to reduce that um, quite quickly and also make sure that we chose the platform that was able to work across all of our different brands and our needs. And so we got that down to two for now. We're hoping to get that down to one very soon. Um, but the main one that we use is Marketing Cloud um, to engage our customers with our automated and personalized nurture journeys. And Marketing Cloud is like the perfect platform because you guys have already figured out the customer journey and how you can enrich each of the stage of the customer life cycle. But you make it sound so simple and easy when you're talking about it and walking us through it. How, what was the journey like with regards to the implementation? Yes, um, it's, it's very easy um, after you've done the implementation to stand up in these things and talk and it sounds really simple. Um, but, and I, I can only really talk to the marketing cloud implementation journey because that was the one I was really um, ingrained in. But um, like most things, uh, you underestimate the complexity um, of the implementation. And so um, we were really fortunate to work closely with AFD to help us implement first on Red Balloon. And I think what's really important here is that for the implementation, we didn't want to do this big bang across all of our brands at once. Um, so what we did was is we kind of did it first on Red Balloon um, and then we used the learnings along the way uh, to kind of make a blueprint and then do the same for our other brands. And we were able to then do that at pace. Um, and so we were able to migrate Adrenaline um, shortly after Red Balloon in, in a quarter of the time, I think it was around 10-ish weeks, we were able to get all of our transactional, our, now, our nurture journeys, our subscriber comms um, all up and running. Um, and that wouldn't have been possible with AFD support at the time as we were really lean team. You know, we, we were a team of, of three or, at the time. And so um, it, was, it was definitely um, ambitious, but we got there and we got some great learnings along the way. So definitely complex, not as, it, it's not um, very easy, but I think we got some great learnings that simplified the process down the track. Yeah, and I love that you already have from the get-go the wisdom of crawl, walk, run, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's so easy to think like, you know, you just want to solve everything, you know, even with our own marketing, I have that, oh, we can do this, we can do that, you know, just because, you know, the platform is able to, right? But to have that discipline to say, well, we got to do the simple things first and then crawl, walk, run, so that you build the, really the capability of not just you know, your team, but also build that strong foundation with your partner. And the team loves working with you guys. We're so privileged to be working with you. Thank <laughs> you for being so, so nice to say that. Um, and what were the main challenges? What were the main challenges that presented themselves that, you know, like for you is like, oh my God, this was like, you thought would be like a big blocker, but you guys overcame it. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, there was a few. So as I mentioned, we, we had a really lean team. So, um, making sure that we had a partner like AFD to really support us and lean on for that technical expertise was really helpful um, in trying to kind of, we also had our core work, we had to deliver simultaneously as a very mm -hmm. lean team. Um, it wasn't, you know, two different teams working, one on the implementation and one on our core work. It was the one team. Um, and so making sure that we had um, AFD to kind of really lean on and kind of work with us, especially during our busy periods like our hallmarks, um, was was it was a main challenge, but I feel like we overcame that. Um, we also needed to stand up a cross-functional team to be able to deliver this because this wasn't just my team that was standing this up. This took a lot of different subject matter experts in the business. So we're talking, you know, um, resources from our data team, from our tech team, um, uh, obviously from marketing team, and to make sure and and our customer experience team, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are also talking to our customers on a daily basis. And so, making sure that we got we brought everyone along on the journey, we could get the buy in from them, and we actually grabbed um, some dedicated resources from each team. We set kind of the vision and the scope, um, and we kind of set up this this cross functional team, which we hadn't done before. Um, and then once we kind of set up this this squad, um, so to speak, we will quickly be able to pick up pace. We were able to make swift decisions and pivot if and when needed. So I would say the challenge of trying to get that buying to get the cross-functional team stood up was like the stand up was really, really difficult, but we got there and, and we it proved its value very quickly because we were able to get in a room and make decisions on the fly. Um, and then I would say embedding the new tool into the business. So this is always challenging. Um, so ensuring that the team were upskilling and understanding how the platform works. So 
whilst we were doing the implementation, we were also doing our trail heads and we were talking to other people that had used marketing cloud. We were, you know, leaning a lot on AFD on like, if this is what our use case is and this is what we want to do, how might we do this? How And I think having the team dedicate just as much time to understanding the platform and how it works um, was, was a key challenge whilst you're also doing an implementation and delivering core work. So it was definitely a challenge, but I think if you have the right mindset and the right attitude, the team were amazing at being able to do that all at the same time. <laughs> I love what you said. You were like tinkering with the engine while flying the plane. That's really how it's, <laughs> you know, how it must feel like. And, you know, like, um, I'm just so amazed that you guys had, again, that that discipline and also the wisdom that we got to bring each other together. We need to, you know, break down the silos, like kind of like circles of wagons and like, you mm -hmm. know, work uh, as a team. And, you know, everyone has their own agenda, but we got to like set that all aside and we have a common goal, which is to improve the customer experience. And that's just amazing. And it sounds simple, to be honest, right? When you say it now, it sounds so simple. But a lot, I see a lot of companies that really fail to do that. Then, you know, if they don't have that collective buy-in, that's when a lot of the digital transformation really kind of like gets, you know, forgotten or it's like it's, it just doesn't happen for a lot of companies um what were the biggest lessons that you learned if you can i'm sure there are plenty but you know just think mm -hmm. about all of the companies that's going through you know the, the the journey that you guys are going through right now what would be your biggest um lessons that you can share with them oh wow so many um <sighs> Hindsight's a wonderful thing, but um, a few that come to mind is that, you know, like I said earlier, you can have all the fancy tech mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. but you can't un unlock the value of them if you don't put as much, if not more importance on the people and process that are using those tools. And I think that's a really common pitfall that happens in in um, the business. And, uh, you know, I've done, I've worked at other businesses where we've we've kind of gone through the same motions and we've made some probably we've put all of our all of our eggs in in the tech and the tools um and kind of forgotten about the people in the process and that's super important if not more right because yeah. i think it's really you need to be really important ensuring that you have the right team the right skill set and the right mindset you know you need to make sure that everyone for us it's about having this ethos of being customer obsessed because at the end of the day like you need you need to be delivering the value to the customer and so um, I would definitely say that, yes, tech is important, but that's your enablement. That's not your strategy. That's not the people you need, the right people using it. So what is your skill set? How does that change the way you function as a business and as a team? Um, and making sure you plug that gap um, sooner rather than later so that you're not just creating technical debt, just sitting there on software because you don't have the right people that can use it. Um, second, I would say, don't try and do it all at once. You know, we, I think we started with a really big, big ambition. And and sometimes um, that's to my own detriment. I always say that my eyes are bigger than my stomach. I always want to go after the big thing. Um, but I think it's really important that you have to be able to prove um, value along the way. And so, you know, define your use cases. Now that you know your customer pain points, you understand your why, um, kind of, pressure test them. What are the ones that are the low hanging fruit mm -hmm. um, that aren't kind of the most probably exciting use cases you want to go after, but you know, it's going to deliver the value and you can prove that. And so I would say define your use cases, create a minimal viable product, and then apply a crawl, walk, run approach um, and, and make sure that you kind of hold yourself accountable to that. But I think it's really important to not overcommit. Um, mm -hmm. Just choose a few that can unlock the value and then you'll learn as you go. Um, and then lastly, which kind of, kind of, this kind of dovetails into the, the early one is like always come back to your customer strategy. You can have a strategy and you can get that all done. And I think sometimes you can get caught up again, like in that shiny new tool and you see that yeah. they have all of these features and I want to use all of the features and I want to use them all now, but you know, you have to remember the tech tools are built for so many different types of businesses and your business might not need certain features. So I think don't be feature driven be strategy driven, make sure that you're always asking yourself, does this drive value for my customers? Does this address the pain point that I set in my strategy that it needed to address? Um, and so I would definitely say that they're the kind of the top three 
lessons that we kind of learned and pivoted with quickly. They're so amazing. I would like to keep on playing that when <laughs> we're talking to a lot of customers because seriously, <laughs> that, that's, that's really what we always say. And, you know, again, I would emphasize that personally, the person who handles our marketing internally, I, I'm the same. I'm like, oh my God, there's just so many amazing things that we can do. But then I always go back to this mantra that I have that I've heard from a long time ago that the good is the enemy of the great, you know, like yes. we want to achieve great things. Like we got to have the discipline to have the consistency rather the intensity, you know, yeah. how many um, wisdom that you shared there. So you've, you know, you were so impressive with, you know, the really like it, it shows how obsessed you guys are with customer, how you're committed to improving customer experience. So how has this shown um, in terms of, you know, improving the customer experience and your relationship with your customers in terms of, I guess, business results? Yeah. So um, the implementation of Service Cloud and Netbox were able to, I guess, have, we were able to have more meaningful and easier conversations with our customers in much shorter periods. So there was our, um, and I don't know this off the top of my head, but our um, abandonment rate for phone calls and the amount of period of time people were waiting for calls had like nearly halved. It was amazing how much wow. the abandonment was. So we definitely knew that we had, we were able to delight our customers. And also it wasn't just delighting them, it was just that's their expectation and we need to be yes. able to pivot and make sure we meet them. And Service Cloud and Nanobox were able to do that for that. And we saw that value unlock really, really quickly. Um, and then from a marketing point of view, we were able to see a reduction in our, um, in our subscriber churn. And mm -hmm. so um, especially because we were able to use curated content. So with Marketing Cloud, we were able to build a preference center. Um, and when our subscribers gave us their preferences, we were then able to curate that experience for them on a monthly basis. And when we saw... Um, we saw our, our reduction in our churn rate. Um, we were able to send more creative comms to our customers. And I think Marketing Cloud definitely allowed us to unlock that. Um, and also our conversion rates went up as well, which is great. And we're starting to see that our subscribers um, have a higher lifetime value now that we've been able to kind of curate these comms for them. That's amazing. And what was the business results um, because of all of yeah. these metrics that you guys were able to achieve? Yeah, so our MPS is 80 and our CSAT is 4.2 ever since we implemented Service Cloud, which has been such a great success for us and a great um, metric for us to be proud of. And I would say from a marketing point of view, when we migrated Adrenaline um, into Salesforce Marketing Cloud and was able to kind of get some more nurture journeys and personalized emails out, we saw a 35% increase in our click-through rate straight away. Um, and we saw we had our, our, our churn rate half, our, our, like our unsubscribe rate had halved when we started doing more personalized comms. So um, we definitely saw the business value. But again, it started with the customer, you know, the customer pain point and then, you know, ultimately led to driving the business results that we were hoping for. Yeah. So there's really, you know, a tangible result with the mantra that there is really revenue in relevance, right? Leaning in in terms of what, what creates value for your customers will come back tenfold to the business. Mm -hmm. So with all of these amazing results that you guys are achieving and, and you know, you're thinking about Crawl, Walk, Run, I, you've definitely crawled and walked. Like, what is next for BRG? What are the yeah. next Thing. It's really interesting that you say that we've walked. Like, I mean, when I talk about it now, I say, yeah, okay, we've crawled and walked. I would say we've taken a few steps in our walk. I think we still <laughs> have a fair bit to go. And um, that's the new BRG. We're a very ambitious organization. Um, we, you know, we're still working through transformation. I don't believe that um, our digital journey is kind of like a, a stop and, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's it. It's, I think it's a, an evolution. Um, but for what's next for us is um, we are really trying to unlock our personalization strategy. So we did a lot of our standardization, which I spoke about before, about consolidating our tech. Um, we've done some optimizations with our curation of comms and that's increased our click-through rate. But what we're trying to get to is really that personalization kind of one-to-one. -one. Um, and so how do we look to leverage um, tools such as Interaction Studio, for instance, which is next on our list, um, to kind of really personalize that customer experience. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm, I think the next 12 months is going to be really exciting time at BRG and for our customers. Amazing. 
And um, so I already asked you earlier, what were the lessons that you learned? I guess for my last question from you, because I can talk to you the whole day. <laughs> it's such an amazing conversation. But what advice can you give, I guess, as a, you know, as a, for your last, um, for this session, what is the advice you can give to your peers who are in a similar journey as you are? As your party yeah, it's just mm-hmm. so much. I could, I could talk mm-hmm. about this hours of things that I wish I knew but I've come out the other side a bit wiser um I would say um I sound like a broken down record but I know I've said this a lot again it comes back to be strategy driven don't be feature driven um ensure you have your objective set always come back to them ensure you're leveraging features of your tech stack because they add value rather than getting caught up in just wanting to try it out for the sake of it um Put as much focus on people's skills, the governance. Governance is so important when it comes to your tech stack and making sure that you're creating a great customer experience um, just as much as you would the tech. So I would say, you know, people, skills, team structure, uh, make sure that you put as much effort as you are into your RFP for your MarTech stack as you are mm-hmm. the people on your team. Um, I think lastly, and I think it's just this permission it's okay that you're not going to get it right straight away. I can tell you right now, BRG, we've learned a lot and we've learned by failing um, and, and that's okay. You know, um, I think it's fail fast, learn fast. And I don't think you, I don't think I've spoken to any business that has successfully implemented a digital transformation and MarTech stack that hasn't um, made some mistakes along the way. And that's okay. So I think it's, it's a new, I know MarTech's been around for a while, but I would say it has rapidly changed over the last couple of years. Yes. And, that, and that's okay that not every, you know, you're, we're learning as we're going, things are changing yeah. a lot. So I think it's it's okay that, you know, you have setbacks. We did. Like I said, today's a success story and it is, but we definitely mm-hmm. had a lot of learnings along the ways. And I think it's just giving yourself the permission to fail yes. fast and learn fast. Oh, thank you so much for saying that, you know, because we forget that transformation is not easy. Look, you know, um, that that's the whole idea of transformation. You really become a, something different, right? You, you transform to something different. And that's never easy. Growth is never easy. And, you know, I'm sure that would be really helpful to be patient with your own growth and your learnings, right? And by the way, Trailhead is amazing. Like, it's, a, it's an incredible tool to just, like, keep up in terms of the skills. And, yeah, just so many amazing wisdom that you shared today. Thank you so much, Elise. I really enjoyed our conversation. Station. Again, I can talk to you the whole day. Um, thank you for sharing your success story. I'm excited about personalization. You're just going to see a huge upshot in terms of all of those amazing conversion rates that you have. And we're so grateful to be able to be part of this journey with you guys. And again, everyone, email us your biggest takeaway. Um, Elise shared so many amazing wisdom today. Um, we're excited to hear about your biggest takeaway, marketing at afdigital.com with a subject line of VRG100 to win $100, $100 worth of um, experiences from BRG. Thank you, everyone, for indulging us and spending with us your morning today and hope you learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot and I feel so inspired. We look forward to our next session with you guys. Thank you, Elise, Thank and you. thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.